Hello, and welcome to the next free lesson for this Microsoft 7412 training course. All of the training videos in this series are free of charge and aim to prepare you for the Microsoft 7412 exam. In the last lesson, I gave you an overview of network load balancing, including what it is, how it works, and which network services can use it effectively. In this lesson, I will discuss roles and features. Later on in this lesson, I will also demonstrate how to install the network load balancing feature in Windows Server 2012 R2, which is the first step to creating an NLB cluster. Before we go ahead and install the feature, it's important that you first understand what roles and features are. Roles and features provide functionality for Windows Server operating systems. You can think of roles and features as you would regular software applications. For example, if you wanted to create a Word document, you would first need to install Microsoft Word. Without Microsoft Word, you simply cannot create the Word document. The same is true for roles and features on a server. When you install Windows Server 2012 R2 straight out of the box, there is not an awful lot you can do with it. It is, by default, an extremely basic server operating system. Before Windows Server 2012 R2 can provide services on a network, such as Active Directory, DNS and DHCP, just to name a few, you first need to install the appropriate roles and features for those services. For example, let's say you have purchased a brand new server computer. Next, you install a fresh copy of Windows Server 2012 R2 onto this computer. Elsewhere on the network, you have 50 client computers. You want each of these client computers to receive an IP address automatically when they first boot up. In order for this to happen, the network will require a DHCP server to give out those IP addresses. Recall that Windows Server 2012 R2 does not provide much in the way of services when it is first installed. Therefore, in order to make this server a DHCP server, you first need to install the DHCP server role. As soon as this role is installed, the server can provide DHCP services to the network. It is worth mentioning that theoretically there is no limit to the number of roles and features that a single server can host. For instance, you could have a single server host the Active Directory, DNS, DHCP, Hyper-V, File and Storage, Remote Access and WSUS roles if you wanted. Of course, this is assuming the server has the resources to run all of these roles. However, in the real world, this is a bad practice. Keep in mind that whenever a server is rebooted or shut down for maintenance, all of the roles and features installed on that server will stop running. In large organisations, it is not uncommon for a network administrator to purchase multiple servers and then disperse the roles out over those servers. This helps to ensure that your network does not cease to function if one server were to fail or be taken down for maintenance. Now that we know what roles and features do, what exactly is the difference between a role and a feature? You can think of a role as you would any other software application, such as Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel and Microsoft PowerPoint. When you install a role onto a server, you are making a major change to the server. By installing a role, you are essentially giving that server more responsibility. A feature, on the other hand, can be thought of as a smaller add-on package. Features can be installed in order to give roles more advanced functionality. For example, in a moment, we will be installing the Network Load Balancing feature, which allows you to create an NLB cluster. Although this feature is not required by any role to function, after it is installed, there are several roles which can take advantage of the clustering options it provides. 
it is also worth noting that certain roles actually require certain features in order to function at all. If a role requires a feature that is not already installed on the server, it will notify you at the time of installation. So, to sum up, roles are major software applications. Features are smaller add-ons which can provide additional functionality for roles. Now that we have covered roles and features, I will now demonstrate how to install the network load balancing feature onto my Windows Server 2012 R2 computer. Roles and features can be installed using both Server Manager and Windows PowerShell. For the 7412 exam, you should be familiar with both methods. Let's start by looking at Server Manager. This is a clean install of Windows Server 2012 R2 straight out of the box. No additional roles or features have been configured as yet. First, open Server Manager from the lower left corner and select Manage from the top right corner. On the drop down list, select Add Roles and Features. This will open the Add Roles and Features wizard. The first page you will see is the Before You Begin page which provides details on what the wizard does. Skip to the next page by clicking the Next button. Next, you will be asked to select an installation type. For now, it is safe to leave this on the default setting and click the Next button. The next page will ask you to select a destination server. As I am installing this feature onto this server, it is safe to leave these on the default settings and click the Next button. The next page allows you to select a server role to install. On this occasion, we do not want to install any server roles, so I will again click the Next button. On this next screen, you will be asked to select a feature to install. From here, I will scroll down and select the Network Load Balancing feature from the list by ticking the tick box. Notice that I have received a dialog box stating that in order to install the Network Load Balancing feature, I will also have to install some additional roles. This is typical when installing certain roles and features. I will accept the prompt and install the additional features by clicking the Add Features button followed by the Next button. Finally, I will be prompted to confirm the installation. Notice at the top of the screen you are given the option to restart the server automatically if required. It is not uncommon for certain roles and features to require a reboot after being installed. When installing roles and features, personally, I like to tick this tick box so that I do not have to restart the server manually once the installation has completed. I will accept this by clicking the Yes button, followed by the Install button. The installation of the feature generally does not take too long to complete, but will ultimately depend on the speed of the server. When the installation is complete, Server Manager will prompt you that the installation was successful. Notice on this occasion a reboot of the server was not necessary. To finish the installation I will click the close button. Now that the feature has been installed I am able to set up and configure an NLB cluster from Server Manager by selecting Tools and selecting Network Load Balancing Manager from the drop down list. This is all very well if you are running Windows Server 2012 R2 in its full GUI mode, but it does not have to be configured that way. It is possible to install Windows Server 2012 R2 without a graphical user interface. This is called Server Core Mode. With Server Core Mode, almost all graphical interfaces of Windows Server 2012 R2 are removed leaving you with just the command prompt and the Windows PowerShell tools to administer the server. I will now demonstrate how to install the Network Load Balancing feature on a Windows Server 2012 R2 server in Server Core mode. First, I will need to enter the PowerShell tool 
by simply entering PowerShell in the command prompt window and pressing Enter. Notice that the command prompt is now prefixed with the letters PS, indicating that this is in fact a Windows PowerShell prompt. From here, I will run the PowerShell commandlet install Windows feature NLB. This instructs Windows PowerShell to install the network load balancing feature. However, by default, this command does not install the configuration tools for the feature. To install these, I will add the switch Include Management Tools. Another switch which I like to add is the Restart switch, which will reboot the server automatically if a reboot is required. If a reboot is not required, the server will not be restarted. After pressing Enter, the network load balancing feature will start to install. The installation should only take a moment to complete, but will depend on the speed of the server. Once the installation is complete, you will be prompted that the install was successful. Notice also that if Windows updates are not already enabled on the server, you will be encouraged to enable these to give you access to the latest feature enhancements and bug fixes. This concludes how to install the network load balancing feature on Windows Server 2012 R2. In our next lesson, I will demonstrate how to create and configure an NLB cluster in Windows Server 2012 R2 using both Server Manager and Windows PowerShell. If you'd like to see more Windows Server 2012 R2 training videos, please see our YouTube channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next lesson.